Hey, Brian, um, the other guys have been asked about it too, but just Trey Sanders, Coach Saban said that he's close to 100%. Given what he's gone through and, and being the guy in your position group, just how good is it to see him back out there? And what can a, tra a healthy Trey Sanders mean for this offense? Well, it, it feels great having Trey back out there, just knowing the situation that he had went through. And just, you know, we stood by his side throughout that whole process. And, you know, he kept his head down. And he kept working, you know, all the way up to this point. And, you know, it, it's a good feeling to have him back out there. He's happy. He's feeling a lot better. And, you know, the main goal for him is to try to get him as close to 100 percent as we can before the season starts. And, you know, you know, he, he is a great addition to our running back room. And, you know, we would love to see him have an opportunity to play. Cecil, go ahead. Cecil. All right, Michael Casagrande, go ahead. Cecil's there. You... Yeah, I'm here. And Michael. Go ahead. Thanks, Michael. Uh, Brian, do you, uh, do you intend to hurdle any guys this year, or are you more of a run them over time um, when you get loose in the back? I, I didn't hear the question. But um, he asked me if I'm a more of a run them over guy. Well, more of a run them over guy than a hurdle guy, like not. Well, I, I pretty I have my own style of how I run the ball. You know, I, I like to break tackles and make people miss, and you know, you know, whatever whatever way I can do that. You know, just being instinctive. You know, that's that's how I'm gonna do that. You know, more than likely it'll be probably you know lowering the shoulder or you know dropping my pass. I'm, I'm not really a big hurdle guy. You know, that's not really part of my game plan, but. Um, I just do whatever I can to just, you know, make plays and, you know, break tackles and make people miss. All right, Casagrande, go ahead. <clears throat> yeah, your thoughts on uh, the soft shell helmets you guys have been wearing in practice the first few days? What, what's, what's that been like? Uh, I feel like it's, it's just for safety protocol. In my opinion, they're a little heavy, but, uh, you, know, you know, they do everything they can around here to make sure everyone is staying safe. So I, I appreciate that addition to, you know, just adding those to our helmets just to keep players safe in practice. Tony, you're next. Yeah, Brian, what have you seen from Kamar Wheaton so far? And uh, what advice would you give to him starting his career, you know, behind so many talented backs in the backfield? Uh, what I've seen from Kamar, you know, he's, he's a very fast guy. You know, he's, you know, he's paying a lot of attention in the, the mean room. He's, he's catching on and stuff fast. And, you know, my advice to Kamar would be to just, you know, focus on, you know, just learn the playbook so that he can play as fast as he can, and, you know, and just, you know, continue to work and trust the process so whenever his opportunity comes, he'll be ready for it. All right, Nick Kelly, you're next. Hey, Brian, uh, I'm just curious, the time you spent in the room with Najee and uh, Damian and, you know, guys like that, uh, what did you learn from some of them? I, I really just learned, you know, just the work process, you know, just how we need to go about, you know, working every single day, you know, to get what we want. And, you know, just being beside those guys, you know, just seeing them, you know, work hard every day and create opportunities for themselves, you know, just on NFL rosters, like as they are right now. It's just, I just use that as motivation for me, you know, just sitting in the same room with those guys and just watching how they work every single day and how we come to work. So, you know, that's the biggest thing for me is just the motivation from, playing beside those guys. Ryan Hennessy, you're next. Yeah, Brian, you've been uh, on this team for, for a few years now, and to see the evolution of Pete Golding on the other side of the ball, what have you seen throughout the years and how he's grown as a coach on the defense side of the ball going up against you guys at practice? I mean, he's a very smart coach. You know, he, you know he's beside Coach Saban every single day, so, you know, they work together. So, I'm, you know, he, he's making improvements as well. And, you know, um, he makes sure the defense is, you know, prepared and ready for you know, whatever we come with on the offensive side of the ball. And, you know, it just, it just makes practice a lot more competitive just with his knowledge to the game and how smart he is. All right, Tony Sakalis, go ahead. Yeah, Brian, uh, Evan said that he lost uh, about 15 pounds, says he feels a lot, a lot lighter on his feet. Uh, is that something you can notice uh, running behind a guy like that? Can you, can you kind of notice that difference with, with him being lighter on his feet? Uh, you know, Evans has has always kind of, you know, been, you know, explosive off the line of scrimmage. You know, uh, it, it, I'm pretty sure it's a, it's a big difference from him as far as how he feels. 
but that's something I can also pay a lot more attention to as far as the the runs that we we run to his side of the ball and how explosive and how fast that he can move off the line of scrimmage and you know that'll make a big difference for us. Uh, Brian, I was wondering what your first memory of Alabama football was growing up. My first memory of Alabama football, I mean, I don't know exactly where it started. At. I all like growing up, I've always seen the Alabama A, the Crimson Tide, the, the Elephant. I've always seen, you know, just everything just regarding just University of Alabama, just by living so close. But the, the my first major, like the memory that I remember the most was probably the first national championship that I was old enough to see. Oh, not. Michael Casagrande, go ahead. Yeah, do you do box jumps in in training? Yes, sir, I do. What's your what's your best jump? Uh, I don't know exactly which, like how they measure the box jumps, but I could jump pretty high on box jumps. So Evan said he he got forty eight inches. Evan Neal, can you get? You think you're you're around that range? Uh, I'm pretty sure I could jump forty eight inches or higher. All right, Ryan Hennessy, go ahead. Yeah, Brian, I asked you about the defensive side of the ball with the coach. I'll ask you about the offensive side. What have you seen this year with Coach O'Brien? A little, uh, I don't know we don't compare, but the comparisons between him and Sark and what things you like this year with the energy? Um, coach, o, coach O'Brien has been a great addition to us. You know, his energy is bright. You know, we, we love his, the energy he brings to our room, and he's been doing a great job with the players and just developing relationships with the players. and. Uh, you know, we, we're still kind of building a relationship, just you know, starting with the start of fall camp as we roll on to the season. So, you know, we, we just plan, you know, continue to build on what we have now, and it, it, it could be something special for us. Joseph Goodman, go ahead. Yeah, Brian, I had a follow up in that previous question. What, what, so what's it like as a running back, start the number one starting running back for Alabama being from Tuscaloosa? What is that like for you? I mean, I, I've I worked my whole life, you know, for this opportunity. You know, I've did everything I could up to this point to put myself in this position. You know, the biggest thing for me to do now is just take advantage of my opportunity and continue to work hard every day. And hopefully, you know, I can get everything I want out of this deal. AP Stedham, go ahead. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Brian. Brian, Coach Saban has brought in a number of speakers through the years. Which one or ones have you enjoyed the most and why? Uh, I think the speakers that I've enjoyed the most would probably be between Kobe Bryant, Mike Tyson, or our re most recent speaker, Alice Rodriguez. I will only say that because they, they left messages with us that were, you know, not only like messages that we can use in our everyday life, but, you know, also messages that help them, you know, perform at a high level and do the things that they did in their careers to help them be successful. Cecil, go ahead. Hi, Brian. I have a follow-up. Um, the, the circumstances last year, which I'm sure nobody liked, but it did give you an extra year um, at Alabama. What went into your decision to come back, play the extra year, and, and when you look back, um, how do you view 2020 as an opportunity as well as a, well as a difficult? Well, I can say I'm extremely grateful to have had a, a opportunity to come back for an extra year. You know, I, I didn't I didn't think it would turn out the way it did, but I'm I'm, I'm blessed for that opportunity. Um, and also um, about last year's season, I can say that a lot of things that. We didn't turn out. We didn't expect for it to turn out the way it did, but we handled it. We handled it, you know, the best way we could, you know, so that we could be victorious. Talking a little trash on the field, yeah, we get it. Trashing the state with litter, that's terrible. Keep it clean. Keep Alabama beautiful.